Okay, so for day 12, I want to create a connection between a job and any number of tags. So if you've done this before, you probably know, well, we'll probably have to create some kind of pivot table. But yeah, then how do we represent that relationship within our code? Well, the answer is to use a belongs to many relationship. And I'll show you that today. Now, why don't we begin by creating our tag model? PHP Artisan make model tag. And this time I also want a migration and a factory. Cool. So now we have the model, the factory, and the migration. Okay. So yeah, why don't we start within the migration file? Now, what does a tag consist of? Well, at least initially, a name should be fine. Okay. So think about it. We have a jobs table. We have a tags table. But then we need something in between, right? A connecting table. And this is our pivot table. So think about it. Within this table, I could store the tag ID as well as the job ID. So I could say, all right, the job with an ID of one uh, is associated with the tag with an ID of one. All right, new row. The job with an ID of one is also associated with the tag with an ID of four. Next one, the job with an ID of seven is associated with a tag with an ID of nine, right? You get the idea. It's a standard fair pivot table. Okay, so let's create that now. Uh, you have two choices. So I could create a brand new migration, but keep in mind, there's no hard rule that a migration class can only ever contain one schema create call. So for example, if I just wanted to group these together, so I could have our tags creation as well as our job tag uh, table, that would be fine as well. Uh, and I think you'll find you'll, you'll do both. Uh, it sort of depends on the order that you create these things. So for example, if you were to add the pivot table a month from now, it would be within its own migration. But if you're doing it all at once, this is fine. You could group them inside the same file. Something to keep in mind. Okay, cool. So what should our pivot table consist of? Well, mostly foreign IDs, right? So I'll show you. We could do table foreign ID for a job. So this is going to handle our job uh, ID column. Next, we're going to need another one for our tag ID. So I can say foreign ID for tag. Now, in terms of timestamps, uh, this is mostly a preference. Uh, you have to decide when you create a new record in this pivot table, would you like to track uh, the, the timestamp for when that happened? Sometimes that's important. Other times uh, it can be omitted. It just depends. But we will add it in this case. Now, I'm about ready to run this, but real quick, a little gotcha. So when we run foreign ID for job, that's going to prepare a job ID foreign key. But we have to be careful because we want job ID to point to our job listings table rather than that jobs table that Laravel includes out of the box. So if I command click on the method, you'll see that I can override the column name. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I will call it job listing ID. And that's a little more appropriate. OK, let's give it a run and run it. PHP Artisan migrate. All right, so if we come back and refresh, here's our tags table, and here is our job tag pivot table. Now on that note, keep in mind the naming convention here. We take the singular form of each of the connecting tables, and then we sort them in alphabetical order and separate them with an underscore. So jobs and tags become job tag, and that's fine. Okay, so now let's talk about constraints. So if I were to manually add a tag here, we'll call it programming, and let's go into jobs. Let's say, how about the job with an ID of 10? Okay, job with an ID of 10 is associated with the tag with an ID of one. All right, this is fine. However, what if I were to delete that tag like so? Well, if I come back, give it a refresh, it still lives. So now we have an orphan, don't we? We have a record that points to a tag that does not exist in our system. And yeah, we don't want to allow for that. So this is where we can add a foreign constraint. And this is especially important because SQLite defaults are a little bit different from MySQL. So this will be a good exercise. All right, I'm going to switch back. And for my job listing ID... I'm going to add a call to constraint, so create a constraint, and then a second one to cascade on delete. And then I'll do the exact same thing for tag ID. 
Okay, so what this says is create a constraint, and then if that referencing uh, record happens to be deleted, I want you to cascade and delete this pivot record as well. And the same is true for tag. So if we have a, a job ID of one and a tag with an ID of one, but then the tag with an ID of one is deleted, it will cascade and also delete the pivot record as well. Okay, so I want to roll this back and run it again. But notice drop if exists only deletes the tags table. So we need another one here for job tag. Okay, let's give it a run. PHP Artisan migrate roll back and PHP Artisan migrate. We'll do it all in one go. Cool. Okay, so now, yeah, let's manually create another tag. And then we'll say within job tag, the job with an ID of 10 has a tag with an ID of one, and we'll give that a save. And we can see the constraint is in place because we see these little arrows here connecting them. So I can click it and it'll take me directly to that record. Further within job tag, if I go to structure, notice I can see the foreign key right here. Okay, but we still have a problem. Uh, again, this comes back to SQLite defaults. If I were to return to tags and delete this record, it lets me. And if I come back to job tag, oh, it's still there. So what was the point? Uh, we added the constraint, but it didn't constrain anything. Uh, what's the problem? Yeah, this is a common thing that people run into. So it's good to know. Okay, so the defaults for SQLite specify that constraints are not enforced. But in your Laravel app, they are enforced. But yeah, keep in mind, we're not in our Laravel app right now, are we? We're just accessing our database directly. So we are bound by the defaults of SQLite rather than the defaults of Laravel. Okay, so that means if we're directly within our database GUI and we want these constraints to take effect, we need to manually turn it on. But in our Laravel app, we can ignore it. They are turned on by default. And of course, if you want to reverse that and turn them off, you can within your environment file. Okay. Let's go to the SQL tab and I will run pragma foreign keys equals on. All right, turn on foreign constraints. Okay, so now if we come back to tags, let's re-add that one. All right, we should still have our pivot record, but this time if I were to delete the tag, it will cascade and also delete the, uh, excuse me, also delete the corresponding pivot record as well. That's good. And of course, the same would be true if we deleted the uh, referencing job. Okay, very cool. So now I want to see this in our PHP code because that's what we most care about. Okay, so let's set up the relationship. We now have a model for job and tag, but no relationship between the two. Okay, let's start within the job. So if I have a job and I want to access all of the tags for that job, then our method would be called tags. And again, if you can't remember what to call that, just imagine you have a job object and you want to access something. Well, ideally, what would you call? You would do something like that. So there's your method name. Okay. So our relationship is not a has many. It's not a belongs to. It is a belongs to many relationship. So it belongs to, but it also can have many. And this makes perfect sense when you think about it. So does the tag uh, called programming, does this belong to, how about the job with an ID of 10? Well, yes, but it doesn't exclusively belong to it. Many, many jobs can be associated with this tag. So yeah, we don't have a belongs to relationship. It's almost like a belongs to and has many relationship. And yeah, we represent that with this one right here, belongs to many. Okay, so let's reference the corresponding tag class. And then I also wanna do it in reverse. Now what's cool is when it comes to belongs to many relationships, it's the exact same code on both ends. So for example, if I go to tag, Imagine we have our tag object and I want to access all of the jobs that are associated with this tag, then I would do something like this, right? All right, so we have our method jobs and that too will return a belongs to many relationship and we'll reference the job class. And that's it, cool. All right, so now I want to play around with this. Let's go back. Uh, we have a tag of programming. Do we have any pivot records? No, I will manually add one like so. And let's give it a shot. I'm going to start by opening PHP Artisan Tinker. We will find that job. So app models job. 
it had an ID of 10. And now if I want to find all of the tags that are associated with that job, I can run job tags. But actually, as I think of this, I wonder if we'll see an error. Oh, we do. Okay. This is helpful at the very least. So no such column on the job tag pivot table called job ID. All right, so it's expecting a column name of job ID, but we know that the actual column name is job listing ID. And that's because Laravel is assuming a default here that usually will work. But in our case, our PHP class is job, but the corresponding table is job listing. So yeah, in situations like that, where you have to avoid certain collisions, you need to be explicit about the column ID. And here's how we do that. Come back to job. And if I command click here, you can see that we have the related model, then the table name, and then the foreign pivot key and the related pivot key. So let's add that here. So I'm going to override that. And I can use a named argument for this. So I can do the name of that argument, colon, and then not job ID, job listing ID. And that should fix the problem. Okay, so boot it back up, find our job then get the job tags, and this time it works. All right, a little bit of a, a bit of weirdness there. Again, this would only be ref, uh, relevant in situations where your eloquent class doesn't perfectly line up with um, the relationship or the table name, something to be aware of. And also, this is going to be true in reverse. So if I have a tag and I want the jobs, well, it's going to look again for job ID, but that's not quite right. So in this case, we don't want the foreign pivot key. We want the related pivot key. So I could update this as well. Related pivot key would be job listing ID. All right, so let's give that one a shot. Bring it up. Let's find the tag, app models tag find one. And now if I want to access all of the jobs associated with that tag, I could say tag jobs. Okay, and now we get a collection of one item. All right, this is great, but now I want to finish up by quickly showing you how you could attach new records, and it's very simple. You could say tag jobs, but notice I'm not going to access it as a property. That would give me this collection here, and I don't want that. Instead, I will call it as a method and then run attach. I want to attach a new record. So I will give it the ID uh, of a new job that I want to attach. So how about this human resource director, seven? So I could give it seven, or I could give it a full call to app models job find seven. Either one of those is going to work. Okay, so now if we come back to our pivot table, we have two records. Great, but now here's a little gotcha. If I were to run tag jobs again, I still only see a collection of one item. And this is because this collection has already been loaded into memory. It's not performing a new SQL query. So if you want to fix that, of course, you could either refetch the, the tag from the database and start all over, or you could say tag jobs get. Just run a brand new query. And now we get a collection of exactly two items. So why don't we say... Uh, tag jobs get and pluck the title. So this is just going to grab a single uh, field or attribute from each of those jobs. So now we have a brand new collection of only the job titles that are associated with this particular tag. All right. So yeah, it's kind of a lot depending upon your skill level. Uh, if you're already familiar with pivot tables and relationships of this sort, then this is probably a cakewalk. But otherwise, if it's all new to you, then it might take a minute and that's okay. Uh, watch the video a second time. Work on the homework, which is this. Uh, you're working on your little blog idea, right? Well, a post could be associated with any number of tags, right? And now you know how to represent that. You have a post table and you have a tags table. The next step is to create the intermediate table, a post tag pivot table. So play around, see if you can get that to work. And when you feel comfortable, and only when you feel comfortable, move on to day 13. Lucky 13. I'll see you then.